Gutierrez. I'm so happy to have you here. I say welcome if you are new. I'm the business developing coach and Mr. Greg Brownton is going to be the special guest tonight and we are bringing in a special topic. He will be talking about the five-step accountability plan. Let's start, Greg. Let's talk a little bit about this and let everyone know how important it is to Keep the momentum. How important it is to set our goal and continue working toward our goal with all the you know, energy and enjoying every single step. So that's the beautiful of learning how to keep the momentum and also uh, the accountability plan that he's going to go over with us tonight. Greg, I'm so happy to have you here. Thanks for being here and accepting our invitation. So let, I'm me, give you let me present up here. You should be seeing the five accountability, the five-step accountability plan, the first slide there. Is that Frania? Thank you so much for giving <laughs> me the opportunity to, to chat with you guys and, and maybe share a little bit of information along the way. Uh, some things that I've learned through uh, some years in the military and also in corporate America. And uh, especially I'm going to give you the backstory a little bit on how the accountability plan has kind of helped us and actually in our own family. And that's where it's been most decisive and, and, and most effective for us, uh, just kind of closer to the heart. Uh, but what I'm going to do is hopefully by the end of, of, of this brief presentation here, help you guys understand kind of the effectiveness of deciding, acting, committing, and achieving in the context of five steps that you can use to kind of create an accountability plan that allows you to kind of design your life a little bit, but also a practical approach to being able to apply it in your daily life. Because um, in a lot of cases, some people go out and make goals and do all these great and um, thoughtful things, but then they never follow up on them or it just becomes a piece of paper that you set aside and you come back to weeks later or you go to a seminar and you're all excited and you know you're all inspired and then you kind of it's kind of inspiration hangover right two days afterwards you're like oh back to reality um and so what i'm going to do is share with you guys some information uh that'll hopefully you can use everyday life this is just a little quick thing about me and my family we've um we we uh live here in the denver area uh, we've uh, spent some years in the military, corporate America. We've got some divers and we've got a pilot in our family. Uh, we've got a, 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 some gymnasts. And I'm going to share a little bit about you, a little bit about them with you uh, along the way here. Um, and how, again, how the accountability plan has helped us to be keep ourselves on track. And, you know, nobody's perfect. But right. using a framework and using a plan that helps us kind of progressively and stepwise be responsible and accountable to our goals and the things that we're looking to achieve in life, I think you'll be like super stoked to understand how you can use this plan in your, in your daily life. So first thing I'm going to cover is this is a quick agenda. I'm just going to go over the backstory to the accountability plan, how it, how it kind of helped our family out of a really tough spot and why I've used it in, in lots of other areas of my life and, and in my profession. And then I'm going to go over the, the five steps, mindset, goals, and timelines. We'll talk about commitments and, and defining daily disciplines. Then we'll talk about how we establish accountability for those goals and habits that we establish. And then finally, one of the, the most fun steps is actually recognition and rewards and trying to set yourself up for, hey, I achieved this. I'm going to go and reward and recognize myself. Um, for the things that I've achieved. And that's always a, a super fun step uh, if you kind of build that right. So just real quick, I'm gonna spend like 10 seconds uh, on this. This is my son in August of this year. He, is, he attends the Air Force Academy right now and he is a gymnast. And I'm just gonna show you a quick little clip of what he's done. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna share a little bit of the backstory here. So here we go. Let's see if this, is it playing for you? Right. It is. Wow. Yeah. 
Ooh, wow. <laughs> yeah, so that's our that's our gymnast. Uh, he's a, he's a junior in college right now. And I'll share with you guys that, you know, while sometimes we see the results of, of goals and, and habits, it's, sometimes it's interesting to get the insight into behind the scenes for that. Mm -hmm. Like I said, we've got some elite gymnasts. We've got an elite diver who's uh, on, going on, on college recruiting trips right now. We've got a dancer who's in eighth grade. And uh, so we're just, uh, we're running really fast. But I want to tell you about this story that happened. This is a business conference on accountability. I'm going to actually show you a picture of where this event actually happened. That's the place that country. Do you want to go on uh, mute, Samson? Uh, yeah, let me, uh, all right. There we go, Kerr, yeah. perfect. Okay. So this is actually a picture of our house in Cypress, Texas. And the scene unfolded one day where we, my wife and I were in the kitchen, just waiting for the kids to get home from school. We had our two teenagers, our 16 year old and our 14 year old at the time. And they have spent most of their life, 10, 12 years doing gymnastics every day, going to school, going to practice, coming home, eating, homework, sleep, going to school, the same thing over day after day after day, lots of diligence, lots of practice, lots of hours in the gym. Okay. And they came home one day and they just blew through the back door. They were mad. They were angry. They were frustrated. You could just see, it's kind of like, kind of like one of those moments, like when you see your kids and like, it's like, you can see their heart is kind right. of hurting. Like there's something deep down going on. Right. At that, that point, um, the kids have been kind of, you know, talking to college recruit college, uh, colleges for recruiting stuff. And they both came in and said, you know what, we're done. We quit. We are done with gymnastics. We don't want to do it anymore. Wow. What had happened is we had to dig a little bit deeper, but there's so many social and mental and physical and um, emotional issues that are happening that challenge our kids today. And it's not just our, our kids at home. We, we feel and see some of these same challenges in our workplace, with our friends and in our community and in our businesses that we're striving to really, you know, make go or our own self-development is kind of these cycles. And so uh, in this instant, we had to work through all the issues that they, um, that they had. And we, and we had already implemented at the time that they came through here, we had implemented the accountability plan with them. We had established their mindset. We had set goals for them. We had helped them develop their uh, daily habits. And these were goals that were not just gymnastics, but social goals, academic goals, self-development goals, you know, other friends and family goals that they, to keep them balanced. But this moment, in this moment that they came home and just blew through the door, were just so mad and, and so upset, um, we use the accountability plan to get them to realize some of their goals and to actually help them dig out of this one horrible moment. Mm -hmm. But, and that outcome was really good for us. It, it, it went well and we recovered and we helped them get back on track. But here's the thing that I just want to, I want to share with you guys is, is that okay. there's a lot of people out there that are struggling with, you know, Hey, when are things going to change for me? Or how am I going to make things change? Or how are things going to get better? Um, you know, there's, there's mild depression out there. There's health issues. There's lots of things that we struggle with. And um, those two pictures at the bottom of Katie Meyer and Max DeFree, um, Katie Meyer was a Stanford soccer player and Max DeFree on the right-hand side there in the bottom right. Mm -hmm. and he was a gymnast. He was one of my son's good friends as a right. gymnast when he was a teenager. And he was a gymnast at Arizona State University. And unfortunately, both of these young adults actually took their lives. They actually committed suicide. And we don't know exactly the reason why, but you can see that, you know, on the surface, a lot of people are still they're struggling to get things done, to get that momentum, that's to have, true, that, that's true. have yeah. that fulfillment. And the accountability plan is just super easy, super um, effective way of just helping people stay on track, feel that momentum, get that fulfillment of life and be kind of driving towards the things that they're interested in achieving. And that's, you know, part of, that's part of 
one of the most important things in life is keep our kids on track, keep ourselves on track and have that passion and that energy and that momentum going forward. So we're going to, we're going to go into step one here of the, uh, the, the mindset is step one of the accountability plan. And it really comes down to what is your personal philosophy, right? right? What are the things that motivate you? What are the things that in terms of persistence and understanding where you're going in life and, and you're not going to let things stop you? Um, first question, right? Who owns choice? And the answer is we do, right? I mean, we're the only human or the only um, life form on earth that actually has choice. And so it comes down to us. We have to be able to decide as part of your mindset, if there's a goal, there's something you're interested in becoming, and there's some goals you're interested in achieving and changing how things are for you in your life, you have to make that choice. Nobody else can do it for you. It's a super important mindset issue. The next one down is when are things going to change for me? And here is the answer. The answer is when you change. Right. Back to choice. You have to choose to change. Nobody's going to do it for you. Certainly people can help you and support you and, and give you resources. But fundamentally, the person who has to make those changes for things to change for you is you. Now, there's some really good news here, right? Because like skills are learnable from zero. And that means anybody, right? Whether somebody's a PhD in uh, chemistry, right. they start out learning, knowing zero about chemistry. They had to learn it. So skills are learnable. So if there's something in, in that you want to go after that some knowledge and some skills and abilities and capabilities are going to help you get where you're going to go, it may take you a while. It may not be one week or two weeks or two months, but skills are learnable from ground zero. And you can be with enough time, you can become expert. Anybody want to venture a guess as to how many repetitions my son took in order to do that high bar routine? How many? Wow, that's right? impressive. Tens of thousands of reps. Oh, wow. Yes. Over 15 years worth of work oh, in order wow. to do that routine. He didn't learn that in a week or a month. Yes. It took him many, many years to do that. Um, now, last two things here. Discipline your disappointments, right? Everybody's going to fail. Everybody's going to fall down. And that's okay. Because ultimately, what's interesting is people don't realize sometimes that you actually learn more from your failures than you do from your successes. That's true. Because we learn how to change things. We learn how to adjust, how to tweak, how to refine. I need this skill or I need that capability or I need that resource or I need that partnership, right? Um, so make sure that you don't continue, you know, you ever stubbed your toe on a bar stool or on a chair at your house or something, right? Well, right. if you turn around and stub it again and then stub it again and then stub it again, you're just gonna spiral out, right? So make sure you discipline those disappointments, recover from, so having the ability to recover and have a set plan that helps you stay on track, you're going to hit those disappointments, you're going to hit those failure points, but then you do have a plan that keeps you focused. And then the last one here is the number one excuse is time, right? Everybody says, I don't have enough time to do that. Right. <laughs> you're going to make time flow from you where it's important to you. So you have all the time in the world that you need. You just have to prioritize that time on the things that you want to do. And I just encourage everybody, act now, right? I mean, are you wait? What are you waiting till, till tomorrow? Or are you going to wait till new? You're going to wait till January first, twenty twenty three, and do a New Year's resolution? Exactly. You know saying right, they always and, and this is a, a classic one, right? When's the best time to to plant a tree? Right, twenty five right. years ago. Well, when's the next best time to plant a tree is right now. So act now. All right. So I'm going to pause there. Um, let me let me go on to a couple one more concept here with respect to the power uh, mindset. Does anybody know what happens when water reaches one degree higher than 211 degrees Fahrenheit? What happens to water when it reaches 200 degrees? Uh, I think Bruni say something. So, boiling. What's that? Burn. Burn. It boils. There it you go. Boils. It boils. Right. It boils. So, at 212 degrees, just one more degree than 211, water boils. And what happens when you have 
water boiling. It creates steam, right? And um, I could go into a whole history and, and discourse on it, but suffice this to say that the um, steam was responsible for transforming early America, right? We had steam, we had steam powered trains, coal powered trains, right? We had steamboats. All of those that got converted into power and it created momentum, it created movement. And it did that by just one degree difference, right? So when you're struggling and you're almost there at 211 degrees Fahrenheit and it's not boiling for you yet, it's not tipping over, you're not seeing the momentum that you want, I encourage you, just continue to give that one more degree of effort. And over and in time, it will spill over and you'll hit that boiling point. You'll hit where steam is created and it will power you through into your goals. Um, and then I mentioned, I want to tell this quick story about, um, about gymnastics. And, and um, there's a lot of kids that are very talented. And they can, and, and just like ourselves and our own, our own peer group and as adults, there's a lot of many talented people around us. And um, in gymnastics, there are some kids that can actually get a very difficult skill inside of 10 tries, inside of 20 tries. They could get it done in one practice. But there are some kids who it takes not just 50 tries, not 500 tries, but on the 5,000th try, they actually get the skill. Yeah. Right? And I think we can all learn from that in that if we give up too early, like if a kid gives up, if they're like, they get to 100 reps and they don't go for 101 and that 101 rep is wow. when they learn it, they did all that wasted effort and all they had to do was one more try. Yeah. So again, that one degree of difference, give, give that one more degree of effort. Um, and sometimes that's all it takes. But if you stop, then you're going to lose all of that momentum that you've built up until that point. Okay. Wow. Last thing here on the, on the, on the mindset. And then I'm going to, I'm going to share with you guys just a quick little hands-on each of these concepts actually has a hands-on exercise. We're not going to, we don't have time to go through that hands-on exercise, but I'm certainly willing to do it later with folks. I'm happy to give you guys the worksheets that allow you to go through the exercise yourself. Um, and I've got an offer at the end where I'm happy to help you guys kind of step through that if it's something that you're interested in following up on. But here is the, the ultimate success mantra. And this is um, for those of you who um, have kind of uh, adapted to or adopted kind of this you know, there's a, I wasn't in my younger age, in my younger years, I wasn't really big on meditation and yoga and mindfulness and, and really kind of reflecting on myself. I've, I've learned a lot of things along the way. And this is one concept I want to share with you guys that um, has been proven out scientifically through uh, uh, neurobiology. Um, there's a book called um, The Art of the Impossible by Steve Kotler. And um, they did a study where they actually followed um, participants in their study. And then they actually did brain scans with them um, in terms of them stating out loud a statement or a proclamation of who or what they wanna be and what they wanna do. And mm -hmm. as they actually studied these folks, they understood that the, um, that the, the frontal part of the brain was actually processing it in real time as if it was true. And so um, we hear a lot about self-development. We hear about a lot about, hey, do you want to focus on what you were or do you want to focus on what you want to be? Right. The single sentence in this study that they found was most effective. And I, I encourage you guys to uh, uh, adapt it, adopt it as your own. Um, I'll share with you. I, I, I kind of changed mine up a little bit, but I use this as a basis. But essentially, what they encourage people to do is in the evenings or in the mornings, as you're getting started or you're, you're winding down for the night, to use this as an affirmation in your life. And whatever, it doesn't have to be this statement, right? This is just an example, the one that, that, um, that worked really well for them. I expand in abundance, success, and love every day. 
right. and encourage those around me to do the same, right? It's just a, a positive affirmation of, of what they want in life. So I, I actually changed this up a little bit and I put uh, my, my statement that I adapted here goes like this. It says, I thrive and expand in abundance, success, significance, creativity, and love every day and encourage those around me to do the same. Mm-hmm. And so I go through that, that affirmation. I actually affirm that at emotional level, right? So when I say I expand in abundance, I've got a great family. I've got a great house. Yeah. I have a firm job, right? My kids are healthy. Um, you know, we don't have uh, severe illnesses in, in our in our family. Things are going, you know, things are going well. Um, I talk about success. Well, I've, I've done really, I've, I've been fortunate enough to have a successful, solid career in my corporate environment while I'm building my other uh, businesses. And so I'm like, hey, I've achieved that success. I'm not, I'm not the CEO. I, you know, I'm not the um, chairman of the board, but I definitely have achieved enough success that keeps me solid with my family and, and keeps me going. And then I also added in their significance. For me, I want to be able to give back. I want to be able to, um, you know, encourage others and be able to um, pro- live a life of significance, not just success. Right. And I also added in their creativity because I know that you know, if we want to be successful in life, we have to use our mind. We have to think about things. We have to be creative. We have to bring value to our employers. We have to bring value to uh, to the place if we have a business. And um, just uh, as I'm working through those, I actually think of my kids. I think of my family. I think of resources that I need. And um, that's that's kind of the, the ultimate success mantra and encourage you guys to, you know, uh, adapt that if that's something that fits with how you do things um, and fits with your daily habits. I totally encourage you to do this. This will give you a wonderful feeling, a wonderful start of each day and a close out of every night as well. So um, what I'll do, I'm going to go to this, the next one, but this is the um, mindset exercise. This is some worksheets. Like I said, I've had, I'm showing you a blank one and I'm showing you one that's a completed version of it. It's just one that, one that I did. And it's really uh, an exercise on to write out what are your mindsets? What are the things that motivate you? I put in here, success is no accident. I put in, um, you know, who owns the choice? I do. Uh, you know, there's the until principle, um, you know, just things that I am excited about and that I understand that I have to bring as a mindset in order to achieve my goals. So I'm going to pause there before I go into step two and see if there's any questions or discussion you want to talk about. Okay, let me open. Uh, if anyone have any questions, you can unmute uh, yourself if you can and ask any question. I see Thelma that she came. Uh, not long ago, uh, Bruni, I hope you guys are, you know, taking advantage of this explanation. So if you have any questions, just go ahead and, and answer and unmute yourself. You're more than welcome. Let me see if anyone is here. Yeah, if anybody has any questions, go ahead. If not, I'll just keep going and there'll be some time for questions to answer at the end as well. Right. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. If anything, I can check the chat. Yeah. All right, I'm going to drive on real quick. Goals, <laughs> goals and timelines. Okay, this is like a super important concept, and I want everybody to kind of understand this. This is this is crucial because when it comes to setting goals, when it comes to an accountability plan, you must absolutely 100% write it down. And I'm gonna I'm gonna encourage you. I mean, a lot of people are using apps these days or putting stuff on computers, things like that. You're gonna see in all the worksheets and all the exercises that I, I show you here. I wrote it out because there is proof and it is well known that there's a connection between your mind and writing things out that you just do not get when you're actually using something digital. So I encourage you, you know, if you're old school like me, I like to write things out. There's some stuff I like to keep digital, but when I'm dealing with this and I'm, I'm reflecting and putting time and my effort into this, I actually am writing things out. So let me go through these percentages for you guys real quick. 3%. 3% of people, this is crazy stat, 3% of people actually make goals. I mean, think about it. We have people who have, who play football, soccer, 
hockey, baseball, they all have game plans, right? Every coach has a game plan for every single game that they play. But most people don't have a game plan for their life. They don't write down their goals. So if, if you're not in the habit of writing down your goals, make sure you write them down, that you're making goals. Now, only 1% of the 3% of people that actually make goals, only 1% of them write them down. Wow, <laughs> that's big. Only 1% of people write goals down. Now, we're talking about the success, the likelihood of achieving those goals, right? So let's talk about that. If you write your goals down, you are immediately 40 to 50% more likely to achieve those goals and to achieve success. Mm -hmm. If you write those goals down and you now commit them to someone, a friend or a teacher, a um, a spouse or someone that, you know, that you trust and you kind of make it public. You don't have to post it out on Facebook, but if you have people that you trust that you're like, Hey, I, you know, I, I really want to get healthy. I want to get into a healthy weight for my body and height. And I just want, I want to get off my medications that are, are tied to that, you know, whatever it is, that goal state it to somebody. Now here's the next step. That's really crazy. It goes up to 95% likelihood of achieving your goals if you write them down, commit them to someone, and you establish what we call kind of a commitment contract, which is nothing more than a informal agreement and working with someone who is going to meet with you on a regularly scheduled basis to check in on your progress. And that you're going to, you know, discuss with and get feedback from this person. 95% likelihood of success of achieving your goals if you follow that plan. And I'm going to show you right now how to build those goals and how to work on those timelines so that you can write your goals down. And I'm going to take you all the way to 40 to 50% likelihood of success. I think the, the 65 and greater, um, you know, you guys will have to find that person or find that right balance where you can commit that goal so that you can get into the 90, the 65 and 95% uh, uh, achievement, uh, achievement of success. Now, there's three important things that you need to think about when you're setting your goals, right? They have to be inspiring, believable, and something that you can act on. So here's an example. I want to climb Mount Everest. Woo! Man, that's super inspiring, right? I mean, it take a lot of effort, take a lot of time, a lot of training. It's like, I have a great view. It'd be a great experience. But is it really believable for me living in, you know, suburban Denver, Colorado? You know, can I really, is it really believable, you know, with all my commitments and my family and things like that, resources, money to go do that? Probably not so believable. And is it one I can act on? Well, I could probably train locally, definitely in Colorado. But is it something that I can, that fits into my life right now? Probably not. But if I wanted to raise money for like a local youth group, is that inspiring? Yeah, sure. I'm going to contribute to my community. Is it believable? Yeah, I can do that. I want to raise two, three, four, five hundred dollars Easy. Is it something you can act on? Yeah, right away. I can go and talk to people. I, we could put together a car wash. We could put together a fundraiser. Lots of different things. So just understand that as you go through and set your goals, make sure that they're inspiring, that they mean something to you. We're going to talk about that here in a second. Um, that they're believable and something that you can act on. Now, goals, setting goals is so, can be so fun. It can be so fulfilling because how many times do you get to sit down design your life and, and put the goals out there that you want to achieve, that you want, um, that you want to be part of you? Now, would anybody venture a guess? What is the number one reason for setting goals? Does anybody want to venture a guess? Mm -hmm. Feeling of accomplishment. Feeling of accomplishment. That is a great one. Yes, Samson, that's really good. Here's the number one reason, in my opinion, why we set goals. It's not because, it's not because of the achievement itself or achieving the goal. The number one reason for setting and achieving goals is because of the person you become in the process of achieving those goals, okay? Um, so if you've got a goal where um, you're looking to create a, a community that um, 
help struggling help struggling youth with finances, sure, you're going to be, uh, and you achieve that goal, sure, you're going to have lots of resources, you'll have made uh, connections with people, you'll have solved that community problem a little bit. But think of the person that you're going to become in the process of that, having empathy for youth, understanding where they're coming from, connecting with people who have been in those situations, uh, understanding the mindset there, helping them out of tough spots, being a, um, not like a, like a hero, but an advocate for the community. That is part, it was great that you achieved the goal, but who you become is so much more a rewarding and a value, infinite value than achieving the goal itself. And so um, I want to talk to you about this uh, life design and visual chain thinking. If we have time, I can come back to the $1 million house story for you. But I really want to, I want to talk about this real quick because visual chain thinking is thinking about goals that complement each other as you build your set of goals that you want to achieve, right? So let's say that um, one of the goals you have is achieving financial freedom, right? Financial independence. What is the outcome? What can you do? What do you become as part of achieving that financial independence? Well, you're not accountable to anybody for your time. You can do what you want. And you have the finances to go out and do the things that are most important and passionate to you. Certainly, you're going to want to be more successful and continue that cycle of the financial independence. But now you have resources to go th do things that you haven't been able to do before. Maybe it's take your wife on a vacation that you've never been on. Maybe it's um, I have one of my goals. Uh, one of my goals, I have a uh, to host a re-wedding for myself and my wife. To have, you know, we've been married for 29 years now, but yeah. I, I want to like throw like a cool re-wedding for her, right? That'll be, it'll be so much fun. Um, and so as you, as you build and achieve more skills and more capabilities, as you go through your goals, they're going to stack up on each other. And so it's this visual chain thinking of thinking you're going to achieve, and I'm going to, I'm going to share with you guys here a little, uh, a little exercise on how you do this. So I put down here in this box, um, here's the exercise. I'm just going to verbally say it. We don't have time to go through it, but certainly so you can get a, a feel for it. What you're going to do is, it, it's, it's not rocket science to set goals, um, whether they're financial or physical or, you know, who do you want to meet? Where do you want to go? Who do you want to be? What do you want to study? What brings you joy or purpose? What kind of impact do you want to have in your community? Um, you know, what are some marital goals that you maybe have or some family goals or business? What are they? It can be anything, right? And then what you're going to do is you're going to lay, you're going to take that goal list. It's just a list. It doesn't have to be rocket science. It doesn't have to be complicated. Just quiet moment, quiet 10, 15 minutes, write out those things that get you excited, the things that you want to achieve. And what you're going to do later on is, and I'll show you in this next example I've got down here, you're going to label them with an I for immediate. You're going to label with a one, three, or one, three, five, or 10 years. And this is what it looks like when you fill it out. And this is exercise. Again, we don't have time to go through it, but certainly I'll have I'll give you guys the worksheets. You can certainly go and do this on your own and, uh, and, and use it as a way to get yourself started. But you make all these goals, and then you're going to go label them as an immediate goal. I'll give you an example. Top right there, I've got read or listen to two books a month. I don't have to wait a year for that, or three years, or five, or 10, right? I can do that right now, starting tonight, if I wanted to start reading for five minutes or 10 minutes and start on those two books a month. Um, and you can see on the visual chain thinking, if I were to read two books a month about something I'm passionate about and that I want to build a business around or that I want to advocate for other people, you can see over time from visual chain thinking that if I achieve that goal where I'm reading 24 books a year now, what kind of information and training and skills can I pass along to my kids, to the youth that I'm involved with, to my peers, uh, the value I can bring to my own work and professionally. So, I mean, you, you just write down all the things that are important to you. And this is just half my list. I've got, you know, another page and a half of goals that I want to, I want to do, and I've marked them off as immediate three, five, and 10 years. So, um, and there's a little bit more to the exercise there, uh, but I just, Getting these goals down is super important. Like I told you before, um, only 1% uh, of people actually write their goals down and what they're after. 
Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Let me pause there, see if there's any questions, and then I'll, I'll hit step three. Let's see if anyone have any questions. I think we're good. All right, no. <laughs> I All right, enjoyed. No so hopefully everyone is also getting the inspiration and the, you know, learning. From yeah. This. So thanks, thanks, Tanya. So um, this is just a, a quick. I'm gonna I'm gonna just spend thirty seconds on this slide real quick. But this is just to show you that this isn't like I I very I put at the very beginning of my slides. I put success is no accident. There's like a method here. As part of this accountability plan, there is a method. And if you build mm -hmm. disciplines and daily habits that support you achieving your goals, you're going to achieve them. It, you, you, you don't have a choice but not to. Now, if you're not self-disciplined, though, and you don't follow through on these daily habits, these things that you've said, hey, these are the things that I need to do on a daily basis to achieve this business goal, to have a closer relationship with my kids to be able to um, have a, a closer family, to be able to go on vacation during the summer. You know, whatever those goals are that you're gonna do, you have to build these daily disciplines. I'm gonna show you how to do that in this next slide. All right, so the daily disciplines actually shape your future self, right? And so I wanna encourage everybody to realize that what you did yesterday, what you did up until an hour before this meeting, if there were habits or things or tasks that you were doing that didn't serve you well, that don't serve the purposes, once you set your goals, if, if there are habits that don't serve you well, I'll give you an example. If you're looking to, if you're looking to build uh, a, a business where it is, say you want to uh, do some uh, podcasting and you have a, you picked a topic and you want to put out a, a podcast on that. If you spend 15 to 20 hours on the weekend binge watching on Netflix or Prime or Disney mm -hmm. at a habit that serves you, that's going to help you build that podcast, the answer is no. But here's the thing to remember. Daily disciplines are easy to do. So let's give me, I'm going to give you an example here real quick. So, right, let's talk about better health. What's the outcome of better health? More energy, less stress, maybe a, a, a more positive Mindset, and thinking and doing well and have lots of energy and there's you know you've eliminated medications because you're so healthy now and you've got the right body weight and you know for you it's the right balance right but then there's also poor health right you know what's the outcome of poor health low energy maybe you're on medications maybe you've got negative depressed mindset maybe um your health is on your mind a lot and it creates a lot of stress for you right so here just consider two different disciplines, self-disciplines. The top one, self-discipline. Let's say you wanted you exercise daily for 20 minutes. And that when it came to food selection, that instead of the chips and crackers, you go for the apples and oranges or carrots, right? Um, it's just one little choice. Mm -hmm. But what happens if you don't have discipline? If you say, well, I don't have time to work out or it's just a quick snack, right? So the thing here is, is that the disciplines you can set for yourself, they're super easy. They don't have to be this massive change in your lifestyle. It could just be eating apples and carrots instead of crackers and chips and walking around the block for 20 minutes a day. Right. That's not going to, that's not this massive change in your life. But here's the thing. It's easy to do, but it's just as, it's just as easy not right. So back to the first slide, mindset, choice, right? And when are things going to get better for you? When is your health going to get better for you? When you change what you're doing to improve your health, that's when it's going to change, right? So, and there's lots of other equities in life, right? There's lots of other disciplines that you can put together. Like maybe you want to grow your business 15% or you, you're looking for some personal growth or health and wellness, or you want to have community impact. Or maybe, you know, you want to do an annual family reunion or spend time with grandkids, whatever the goals are. You have to develop and put in place what are the daily disciplines that are going to help you get to that goal. Because if you don't, 
you're just hoping it's going to happen. It's not going to just happen for you, right? Right. It's going to happen again unless you change. And so um, let's talk about this is just the hands-on exercise that supports that, right? So we did the goals initially. So now what we would be doing is we'd be transferring over what are the goals that we're interested in. And I'll give you guys a high-level overview here at the very end so you can see the whole plan put together. But you're going to put your goals here. And then you're going to write down below it in the right-hand side. You can see where I wrote, here are my goals. And here's how, here are the daily commitments that I'm going to make, the daily disciplines that I'm going to exercise in order to achieve those goals. So I have here impact on youth or my kids. Well, one of the things as we get as adults, as our kids get older and they have social media and they have friends and they have school is like, well, when do we ever talk to them, right? When do we ever connect with them? Well, I put on here daily in tune with my kids for five minutes a day, right? I don't have, I mean, as busy as they are, busy as we are, I don't have hours to spend with them. They're at school, they have activities, et cetera. But can I talk to them for five minutes? Can I send them a text of, you know, hey, I love you, or I'm thinking of you. And I mean, just those, those interactions, those things to stay connected with kids. It's just a, an example. And again, it's not some life altering thing that you have to change. But I can tell you what, um, I can show you guys a picture if you want to see it. I actually did a Facebook post on this. I wrote on my uh, on my daughter's dry erase in her room. I put a big heart in the middle of her dry erase. And I just said, I wrote on there, your mom and I love and value you. Love mom and dad. I just that put it on as above her bed. And so, I mean, never said anything about it. She never said, oh, I love you. Or she never said hug about it or anything like that. But I knew that she saw it. I knew that it mattered, right? right? Those are the types of things. It's super easy. Again, I don't have to take her out and to go bowling or go to a movie or take her, her, her and 10 friends out to, you know, some event to, to a concert or something in order for her to love me, right? It's just those simple, basic things in life that you can do. Right. Um, and as part of this sheet here, and again, at the end, I'll show you guys how it all comes together in a daily planner format where we actually, I show you where you can actually, you created your daily discipline. So we created our daily disciplines here. And then I have a worksheet as part of a daily planner. And I've got it filled out here in the bottom, just so you can see an example where I actually on the, every single week, I fill out what are my daily commitments and habits and disciplines that I'm going to follow on a daily basis. And I'm going to check them off as I get them done. You can see here, sometimes I have a zero because sometimes I don't get to it. I'm not perfect, right? But that's okay. Doesn't mean you don't. That doesn't mean you don't do it, right? I'm keeping myself accountable through tracking my own um, commitments to myself. So, and then we have this other uh, accountability method here, where we move the account the um, accountabilities here to what are the things that you're going to do in order to keep yourself accountable to achieving that goal. For me, it's writing it down. Um, right. uh, sometimes I talk about it with my wife. Um, you know, I have a good friend uh, professionally that I know, and sometimes I talk to him about it. He's trying, he's trying to get some things going for himself. I also formed um, the uh, accountability club. It's a Facebook group where we meet together on a Friday and we go over, hey, what are the things that you did this week that you're proud of and that were successes? What are some challenges or some things that you maybe didn't get done? And just kind of helping each other stay accountable for our goals and moving along and just kind of building that. It's a mastermind group that we just, you know, we're all in it together and we want to help and support each other moving forward. And then there's recognition and rewards on how to do that. So I'm going to show you guys, here is the actual step four of establishing accountability, right? You need to, one, at the very basic level, you need to account to yourself in writing. That is that sheet where I showed you, you know, hey, you can fill it out and you can write down what are your daily commitments and then you track them every day as you complete them, right? Better, like we talked about before, is if you want to get into the 65% likelihood to succeed, you want to commit it to a friend or a spouse, right? Um, and make it public and share it with them and get feedback and discuss with them. Um, I have a and then number three down there, another way to keep accountable is to have that commitment contract where it's kind of more formal written commitment. It's a relationship with somebody um, and it's scheduled progress. You discuss, you get feedback, you know, 
Um, and, and that level is a little bit more mature where it's active, it's intentional and it's scheduled. Right. And, um, and, and here's the key thing that I want you guys to remember. You know, we talked about getting to these likelihoods of success. So if you write it down and make it out, committed to somebody, 65% likelihood of success. Here's the one trick that I want you to be cognizant of. If you decide to write out your goals and then you want to get with somebody um, a friend, a spouse, whatever, and you want them to hold you accountable and you want to work to that level, you have to give that person permission to hold you accountable because sometimes it just gets annoying then, right? Because it's like, oh, you're, you're bugging the heck out of me, man. Why? Just leave me. But if you've given them permission, it's an exchange. It's an understanding. It's a mutual understanding of, hey, I really want to achieve these goals. Um, can you do me a favor? Will you help you know, on a weekly basis, I'd like to call you and I, I just want you to hold me accountable to it and let's discuss it. The, if you give someone permission, it'll be so much more healthy than if you're just like, hey, you know, call me once in a while and keep me honest on my goals. It's, you have to give them permission and I guarantee you it'll be a hundred percent more effective if you do that. Nice. Last, uh, last step here. Um, this is actually step five. Sorry, I forgot to change that. Step five recognition and rewards. This is the easy one, you guys. Once you achieve your goals, you have to decide up front, what are the things that you're going to do once you achieve something that's going to be able to reward yourself? Maybe you're going to go camping. Maybe you want to take your wife out to dinner. Maybe you want to take your family out to dinner. Hey, maybe you've set a goal where you're waking up at 5 to 5.30 every morning. You want that me time, that personal time. You're building, you're reflecting, you're affirming, you're doing all that work. And you know what? I'd like to sleep in just once. Maybe once you achieve that goal or a set of goals, you're like, you know what? I'm going to treat myself and I'm going to sleep in till 10 or I'm going to sleep in till noon, right? You're Just be careful you do that though because your kids might think you're dead, right? <laughs> you know, you just don't show up till 10 or 11 in the morning. But anyway, you, you're you in charge of this. You know, maybe you go for a hike. Um, this middle one on the skateboard, I love to ride my boosted board. In the street. It's just fun. It's just super rewarding. Maybe you're going to go to a movie, whatever it is. I'm gonna, but here's the thing. It doesn't have to be extravagant. It doesn't have to be expensive. I'm going to tell you this story of my daughter. Um, I, we set a goal with her that she's going to go to a, um, a hip-hop dance uh, place called The Collaboratory here in Denver. And um, she didn't want to go because there are a lot of older people there. Like these are, you know, 18, 19, 20, 21-year-olds that go there as it's, it's an evening activity for them, right? Just like they would go to, um, you know, the bar, go to uh, work out or whatever. They come to the dance place. And she's only 13 years old. And she didn't want to go. And I said, well, hey, I'll tell you what, here's your reward. If you can go for two weeks in a row, um, after the first week, at, at the end of each week, we'll go get an ice cream every time you go. So when she gets done with her dance, we go down two blocks and I buy her a $2 ice cream. <laughs> I, I mean, it doesn't have to be extravagant, you guys. It could yeah. just be some personal time with your wife, you know, whatever it is. But you, but it's super important that you recognize, acknowledge, and reward yourself on your accomplishments. Take pause for a moment, you know, um, and process that achievement and make sure that you acknowledge it to yourself. And if you've got a coach or a friend who's doing it with you or helping you keep accountable, you know, um, they're going to recognize you as well. Um, we all love recognition and we love to be acknowledged for our accomplishments. So don't skimp on that for yourself as well. Um, set it out there. It doesn't have to be expensive, but it does have to be, you do, you need to take that time and you need to actually reward yourself once you make those accomplishments. It's all part of keeping that uh, momentum. So guys, that's the, um, that's the five steps. And here are the worksheets that I'm just going to cover at a high level in terms of a wrap up. We talked about mindset up here in the top left. You set what your mindset is, you know, persistence and, and the, in your own personal philosophy on, on how hard you're going to work and how smart you're going to work and the things that are important to you around, um, you know, success is no accident and understanding that you uh, you own choice and just one degree of effort more, you know, setting that mindset and understanding why it is that these goals are important to you. And if you can set those at an emotional level, they will certainly serve you well. Then you're going to, you're going to put a bunch of goals. You're going to write your goals. You transfer them to this other form here. 
I'll uh, I'll just uh, I'll mark it right here for you guys. So you write out your you write out your goals here, or your mindset. Then you're gonna go here and write out your goals, and you can you know just print a bunch of copies of these, write as many goals as you want. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna transfer your goals into here, and the goals that are important that you're gonna be working on, the ones that are priority for you. You might have a 10 year goal that's not gonna show up on here. Um, it might eventually because you're working towards it with your other near term goals. And then you're gonna set the commitments, right? You're gonna, you're gonna lay out the commitments here that support these goals, right? What are your daily habits? What are the daily disciplines you're gonna exercise? We talked about, you know, accountability, whether you're going to write it down, have a friend, do some type of coaching, whatever it is, mm -hmm. and your rewards that you're going to do here. Now, here's the thing that most people and most kind of frameworks fail to deliver on. And this is, this is, the, this is the differentiator here, you guys. What I did is I put together a daily planner that allows you to transfer your mindset if you want your goals your daily commitments and your accountability methods to a daily planner so that it's not just some exercise or seminar event that you did training and you came home and set it aside and now it doesn't enter into your mind at all what what i've done here is you put in first of all you're going to write every week you're going to write what are the goals for this week right that are that are important to you and some of them might be the same, the same daily habits every week. Um, like, well, I have one that says, be in tune with my wife, right? I want to know what's going on with her. Um, we get busy sometimes. I just check in with her a couple of times a day, make sure I'm not messing up with the kid's schedule or I got to go pick somebody up or I need to be somewhere or whatever, right? Um, I wrote those out and then I, I, I check them off as I do them during the day, every day. I write out a theme for the week or this is the week, sorry, this is the week of, you know, whatever the month is, and I do it in a, a seven-day increment, I write out a theme. What's my theme for the week? What is it I'm trying to get done, right? Sometimes we have thematic things that we're looking to try to get done. What are some weekly goals? What are some to-do lists? I mean, if you need to go grocery shopping, put it on here, right? That's part of your life. It, this right. is just like something that's like, oh, it only has to be my goals, right? You know, if you have a weekly goal where you need to go make an appointment for the to get the tires changed, whatever it is, uh, um, if there's a weekly goal that you want to achieve that maps to one of these goals, put it on here. Um, if there's a milestone, if there's, if there's a priority, one thing that you really, I, I got to get this done this week. This is like, this is a momentum for me. Weekly, weekly momentum milestone, meaning if I can get this done, I'm on a roll, right? And we want, and those where we kind of prioritize the things. You're not ever, sometimes I didn't get things done. I'm going to show you here in a sec how my stuff fills out. Um, and then what you're going to do is I transfer some of the stuff that I'm doing on a daily basis with family or with my wife. I keep it on these different days, things that are happening. I'll write it down here. But some of the times I also remind myself, I take some of these weekly goals or a to-do list and I put it in one of the days that I want to make sure I get it done. Mm. So this is part of the accountability plan being applied to your daily life. It's not just some worksheets that you put in a folder and don't ever access again. This right. is an ongoing process. So let me show you what it, how, this is how it goes. So this is just an example of me having filled out the week of August 29th through September 4th. And I put my goals on the left here. I put what my milestones were that I wanted to get done. Um, and then I put in my daily commitments down here. And you can see where I was only 78% successful for that week, right? But I, I kept myself accountable. I checked it. And um, I had days off. I had things I was doing for work. I had to mow the lawn. I mean, it was just stuff, just simple, basic stuff that we do every day. But to keep those goals and objectives and, and all of our uh, habits and disciplines just woven into our day. So if you watch this video on the right-hand side, I'm going to show you what this looks like. If you look at the video on the right-hand side, I actually created, you can go to Office Depot or Office Max or whatever, and you can actually make these worksheets into a bound. You can make them into a bound little notebook. And so I'm just going to show you a video. It's going to flip through. So this is the end result of, I think, 
I think I'm just showing you like five weeks here. Ready? Here it goes. Nice. Right? So I'm just keeping track of stuff as I go. And I don't get everything done every single week. I'm not perfect. But you know what? If I set my goal at 100% and I achieve 80% of that, yeah, that's a good program. If I never did, if I never did it, then I'd be at 0%. But here I so anyway. So that's kind of what it looks like at the very end. And, and I'll just finish up with this. This is something that um, if you guys are interested, it, it's something that I'll, I'll offer to you guys. Um, remember the goals, written goals, written goals, committed, and actually committing and scheduling check-ins. So what I'm going to do for just this group, for, for Franny and her group, um, I decided, hey, look, I'll give you one free 30-minute coaching. I will help you. I will walk you through this process. I will help you build an accountability plan. I'll help you with setting your mindset, your goals, transferring them, building it into a, um, a, a daily planner where you can actually then make it part of your life, help you prioritize the things that are important to you. And the only investment there is your time because you will need to invest some time, some reflection. You have to think about things. You can't just pass this off. If you, if you go out this exercise half-baked, you know, it's better than nothing, but why not put your full effort into it, right? So if you're looking to get unstuck or, you know, you're looking, you've been looking at some changes that you've wanted to start, but you've been thinking about it. And you're like, ah, I just, I don't know, you know, maybe this will be the, you know, my interest here is really to help people and have an impact, right? One of my goals, like I said, in my ultimate success mantra is one of my, one of my dailies is that I thrive and expand in abundance, success, and significance. And so if I can help somebody get unstuck in 30 minutes, and then you can use this the rest of the time, and it just makes it way effective for you, have at it. That's fine. If you want to continue to go for another couple of weeks, I've got another offer in there where we can do um, three additional one-on-one -on -one coaching sections. And I can be, I can help you with that commitment contract. I can be that person that helps you achieve that 95% likelihood of success. But I would leave that up to you guys. Um, and I will finish there and I will answer any questions that anybody has. And I super, again, thank you for your time and effort. I hope that there's some value in here. I hope you guys picked up some information. And at a bare minimum, I will make available all of the worksheets that I have. They're in PDF format and you guys can just use them. You don't need, you, you, if you've learned enough here, you can walk through that and, and do it yourself. Or if you want to get with me and, uh, and do it in 30 minutes, I'm happy to do that with you as well. Great, great. Thank you, Greg. Thank you so much for your time, for being here and speaking with all of us. I'm sure that many people will be able to watch the video, watch the replay in case, you know, they miss this part. But uh, I think it's, 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 it's great information. It's very rich information. Uh, I have a testimony myself on you know, how applying the accountability plan helped me to develop my business and grow and get where I am today. But thanks to those uh, accountability plan, I'm able to see who I am today and what I'm doing and seeing the results. So let's see if Bruni maybe have something uh, to, to share with us and Thelma. Thelma, I know for sure she also have some, testi some testimony about uh, the accountability, um, you know, plan and how she is moving forward. Uh, Bruni, Bruni, can you share with us a little bit your experience? Yes. Um, I, w I just want to make a comment about um, goals that he was mentioning. And the goal is the only things that you have is a, is something that is not, is, um, let me see if I can find it. Goal is a open your window in your life and it's something mm -hmm. that only you only you nobody else can have the control to manage mm -hmm. and at the end uh the best thing is the results the satisfaction that you have when is accomplished mm -hmm. very much yeah right. so sure. goals it's like when you reach one goal, you go to for the next one, for the next one. And 
is is like a a window and a bigger window, a bigger window, because once you 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 reach that goal, you start for a biggest the biggest one. So it's something um, that help is a big help in life, and uh, and also the goal is together with uh, discipline. So I think this, and once you have something like you know something. Uh, a professional you have near to you to get it is even better. Yeah, definitely. I agree. I agree with you, Bruni. Um, mm -hmm. I agree also with uh, with the with the person that was. Uh, I'm sorry, I can. Uh, I don't know what his name. Uh, <laughs> it's Greg. My name's Greg. 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 I'm sorry, yeah. Greg. Uh, I agree with you that while you're reaching your goals or in process of, you have to step up the game and um, basically become that person that could achieve it. You know, mm -hmm. it's like it demands different things of you and it yeah. gets you out of your comfort zone. And that's the only way you could actually do it. But um by stepping outside your comfort zone and, and um, motivated by that goal or target. It's like a direction that it helps you to manage your day, to, to decide which things are more priority than others. And that helps us to stay a little bit more focused and written down um, that that is great. That is something that we almost do sometimes. I think about what goals motivate me and they're not all um economically oriented you know so it's like okay i need to distribute myself in between uh being yeah. productive in work and also growing spiritually too because it's important to me but for that i also have to invest time mm -hmm. so oh, not, not a lot of people yeah not a lot of people talk about that but it's it's an important part there are different important parts like mm -hmm. there's other people that like to do humanitarian help and mm -hmm. um, doing that. And, and once they do um, put themselves into that, they feel fulfilled, you know? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah for sure. And there yeah. is, there's, there's a really important principle that people need to understand. And I talk about this with kids. So I, I, I teach the uh, accountability plan a little bit to some, some college or not college, but to high school clubs mm -hmm. because, in school, right? A lot of kids don't ever, they don't get a class in mm -hmm. school. I never did when I was young. It teaches you about self-development, teaches you about being successful, not just financially, but as a human um, and being successful and significant to your community. And, you know, how do you go about um, setting goals and achieving them? There was no class there. So mm -hmm. when I to them, here's one principle that I teach the kids is I teach them, if you have no goals, then you will hit them every time because you have none. And that's mm -hmm. kind of a really sad way mm -hmm. to live your life, <laughs> right? That's a super sad way to go through life. So, you know, I, I try to inspire them to set goals, even if it's two or three, um, but you can start small. You don't have to start big. And that's why I kind of, that's why I, sh I put together these kind of implementation sheets, you will, or daily planners, if you will, to help the kids be able to say, okay, well, I make this big list of goals. How do I, where do I start then? How do I, how do I achieve them? I got all these great goals, but how do I, how do I integrate into my daily, my daily life? And then people think about it and they get so overwhelmed. They're like, oh, this is too much information. I've got all these goals. I don't know how to start. I don't have the right resources. I don't have enough time. Where do I start? And that's why I put together the accountability plan that just has kind of those daily planners that helps you to actually implement your goals and your daily habits into um, something that helps you uh, integrate it into your daily life. I appreciate that. Are we able to get those plan, uh, those sheets? Yeah, we will all make them available through Frania. Um, they'll just be in PDF format. I'll make them available to you guys. Yeah, for sure. Oh, that's so sweet. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Greg. Uh, something very important as well that we didn't mention is that when we achieve our goal, one of the uh, results that we have is that our um, confidence grow up as well. Mm -hmm. When you yes. say that you're going to do something, you're going to feel more 
comfortable moving forward and achieving more. So you start from the bottom and then you start growing and growing and growing. So I was looking at the video, Greg, when you post your son uh, doing all those clips, beautiful video, man, you should be very proud. You were showing that video so comfortable and confidence but that's your song and I picture my song and I was like no I get crazy I can't see my son doing something like that uh, and you see so you also uh, get confidence seeing your song for 15 years doing those flip over and over and over I mean that's amazing that's very hard work and, and big accomplishment it's great amazing. thank you amazing so for you it's easy to see that you yeah. feel very comfortable every what period of time should i reward myself when i accomplish my goal and I, that question comes because i love to achieve goal i know how important it is but my problem personally is that i don't reward i i, I go out to do it and i never do it for example, now, a couple of days, I say, I got the money, I got paid, I'm going to reward myself. And I was on my way to do my nails and get a spa for me. I never got there. It's something that I, I, I don't know for what reason. I keep working and working and working, achieving, 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 mm -hmm. but I never reward. So I yes. know that that's dangerous because at one it point, I, I can I don't know if I will get, get overwhelmed and so what is my risk right now? I mean, what you mentioned is burnout, right? You can, you yes. can burn out and then it can kind of all, it can collapse on you a little bit, okay. but again, yeah. remember, you know, if it's something that it can be something simple, right? It could be, maybe you're ordering out, it's just going to deliver, right? I mean, all that is, is a phone call. Um, I also encourage people, like I mentioned before, if you have a friend or somebody or a partner, you know, um, that you're, you know, also, uh, maybe you have a, somebody professional who's looking to um, make some changes as well. Maybe you guys enter in like a little girl pact or something, right? So it's okay. like, hey, you achieve that. I achieve that. We're going to dinner on Friday night kind of thing, you know, and, you know, when we're, we're connected to other people and we have that community and we have other people with us along for that journey, then I think it makes it a little bit easier. Um you know, if you're a single person, um, it can be a little bit harder, but that's again where it's another discipline that you have to exercise for any, right? And you have to understand that if you don't give yourself that break, if you don't give yourself that recognition and acknowledgement, mm -hmm. the potential for burnout. So it should be part of your plan, just as much as you're like success, 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 right. success, reward, recognition, reward, recognition. Okay. Make sure it's part of your plan, just as much as you're going to go out and do more marketing for your business, or you're going to go help one of your clients, you have to do it for yourself too. Good. Thank you, Greg. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, everyone watching this uh, uh, event, this video today, uh, interview with Greg. And uh, Thelma, thanks a lot. She always support us and Bruni as well. Clinton, he just left. But I'm sure they can have the video later on. Uh, thanks for your time. Greg, amazing, amazing work. I'm very happy with all the explanation. And I'm looking forward to get those uh, uh, pages I need mm -hmm. and implement yep. the reward. Thank you for sharing your knowledge, Greg. It's been very helpful. And thank you, Frania, for taking us into account. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, you guys, for your time and effort. And best of luck, everybody. Thank you.